Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tiny Lab. We are now on the road. We're finished, obviously. You can see that we've got placards up everywhere and on the Proof is Possible tour, we're teaching everyone about how all homes should work through what is going on here in the Tiny Lab. And one of the main ways that we are getting this message across is through air tightness. So if you have no other test ever run on the house that you live in, you need a blower door test at the very minimum. This is a Retrotech 5000. It's the latest model. It's running on a DM32 smart gauge and blah, blah, blah. All the stuff you need to know is basically embedded in this statement. Home performance diagnostics are sexy. And that is what we're trying to make sure that everyone knows because this is how proof is possible is through testing. So what we're about to test here is all of the membranes and the tapes that we were installing. And you can see those videos if you haven't already uh, and how good a job I did as a first time home builder with the tiny lab. So let's go ahead and find out, shall we? We run the blower door up to 50 pascals of pressure. And when we do that, we know how much air is moving through the fan at that pressure. It's always tested at 50 pascals. And when we get there, you can see that my number is pretty low. We're at 50 pascals and I'm at less than 50 CFM uh, through my fan. And since I know that there's that much air going through the fan, I know that that's how much air is coming into my house through all the unintentional gaps and cracks. Now, obviously I've sealed up all the windows. I have uh, closed all doors and openings and things like that. Now that we have this number, I want to know what that number means because of course numbers are numbers. Now let's find out quickly how we compare with energy code. The best energy code in the United States of America, which is the state laws that govern the building codes, is three. We're at less than one and a half, which means that my house, first time home builder, I built to be twice as tight as the building code requires. All over the country, builders are complaining that this is going to be really, really difficult to do. But if I can do it, anybody can do it. So don't let anybody tell you that air tightness is hard because it's totally doable. We did it. Now, of course, nobody wants a code built house because code is a D minus grade when you graduate from high school. What we want is better than code. So of course we know that we're twice as good as code, but also I want to know how I stack up against the best certification in the world, which is passive house. Passive house requires 0 0.05 CFM per square foot of enclosure area. And we beat that also. So this house, first time home builder, sometimes I am an idiot, beats passive house. That means that anyone can do this. Just to make sure that you're clear, air tightness is absolutely possible to achieve. Uh, so now that we know that we have approximately six square inches of leakage in my 200 square foot house. Let's find out if I care to find out where that leakage is. We can do that, of course, with two main tests, which are zonal pressure testing and with infrared. Now, zonal pressure testing, again, is super easy to do if you already have the blower door running. Uh, here we have the blower door running. This is my zonal pressure test. Now we have, of course, it's a tiny lab, so we've got gauges wired up all over the place through the walls. So here we're reading the pressure in the bathroom with reference to the main body of the house and the pressure in the front mechanical shed with reference to the main body of the house. If I want to test the bathroom, I simply close the door and I can see that there is no difference between the bathroom and the main body of the house. That is what we want. That shows the proof that the enclosure actually works the way it's supposed to. The mechanical closet is supposed to be completely outside, which is the 50 mark. And that shows that we're already on that. So that means that there's no connection between my mechanical closet, where all my propane tanks and my water heater and things like that are, and my main body of my house. So both of these numbers are fantastic. Now let's look at infrared. Today I'm using the awesome Thermap infrared camera, which is tiny and it's very affordable. Now what we're seeing here with these colors is good. You always want to see boring pictures of infrared. There is my blower door, nice and warm. You can see that the fan is running. I can't really find much air leakage. I'm even looking at the wheel wells. Now you can see that there is some heat bleed through that wheel well. That's the uh, most thinly insulated part of my entire house. You can see that there is some air leakage. You can see my footprints here. Some air leakage coming out from underneath the refrigerator. And that is because we've got that Brone ventilation system installed down there. Now I did not block that off. I'll talk about that in a moment. 
I did not seal up all of the vents between the tiny lab and outside because many of them have either a mechanical damper or a backdraft damper, like an exhaust fan or like a stove exhaust. But the one vent that I did seal up is right there. That is the fresh air intake for the Brown ventilation system. That one does not have a damper on it because the system is designed to be used 24 hours a day. So if I did not tape that off, then it would look like I had a hole that's this big in the tiny lab, which is not true. What I'm always looking for is an honest answer for how much exfiltration and infiltration or just air leakage there is coming into and out of the house. So that's why I did not tape anything except that one. But just for the sake of argument, Let's find out how good a job I did with the tapes and the membranes by going ahead and sealing up all of the intentional holes between outside and inside. So by sealing up all of the silly stuff that's really not necessary and it's not going to give me an honest answer, I did reduce my number by about 10%, as you can see. I can use that information because proof is possible to improve the performance of my building team, the clients that I'm working with, so that every house gets better and better. Now, hopefully I will not be building another tiny lab anytime in the future, but if this has helped you, please subscribe to our channel. Please like our Facebook page. Come out and see us on the Proof is Possible tour and tour the house, uh, and you can get there by proofispossible.com. So thanks very much for watching. Tune in next time.